Hello guys, good morning all of you. Welcome to the session. Today we are going to solve some problems based on the chapter atomic structure. Okay, the session is going to help you in your coming exams like KVPY, JE, all of the you no know, competitive exams, right? Um, so do watch it. Yeah, so we'll start with the questions. Okay, so if you want to try the question on your own, you can pause the video anytime and then you can try on your own, right? Okay, so let us start with the session. Okay, so let's see the first question here. Okay, so let us discuss these two questions. The first one you see, Rutherford's alpha particle scattering experiment eventually led to the conclusion and that conclusion is, okay? Mass and energy are related. Electrons occupy space around the nucleus. Electrons are buried deep into the nucleus. The point of impact with metal can be precisely determined. Okay, so it is Rutherford, right? So point of impact with matter can be precisely determined. It is not at all given by Rutherford, right? Um, electrons are buried deep into the nucleus, which is not true. If it is true, then the atoms are not stable, right? So that's why C and D are wrong. Mass and energy are related. It is the Einstein equation E is equals to mc square, not given by other words. Option B is electron occupy a space around the nucleus. Okay, so the option B is correct for this particular question. Okay, so we are left with only option B. Okay, Rutherford experiment was what? If you try to remember this, it is the alpha particle scattering experiment. Okay. We have a gold foil and when the light strikes, sorry, the elect, uh, like alpha particle strikes at the gold uh, surface, which is this, suppose. Um, suppose this is the gold foil we have, if you remember this Rutherford scattering experiment. Just a second. Okay, so we have a gold foil. And all this gold foil, the alpha particle strikes. Okay, we have a source of uh, alpha particle here, and this strikes on this surface, right? So what we observe, some of the alpha particle passes through the gold foil without any deflection, right? This is what we observe. Without any deflection, the alpha particle passes through. Okay, some of the alpha particle strikes and it deviates with a very small angle and moves like this. Comes over here and then it deviates like this. This was alpha particle scattering experiment. So some of the alpha particles deviates with a very small angle. Just a quick revision of it if you do not memorize it. Okay. And a very few of them retrace its path, right? It strikes and comes back. Okay. So you see there are spaces which are vacant 
and then only and then only it is possible that some of the alpha particle passes through without any deviation right so that's why we can say there are spaces available vacant within the atom and that's what it means the electron occupy space around the nucleus so we have nucleus suppose like this it is given in other way but it means the same thing suppose this is the atom we have right atom we have we have nucleus here and there are electrons present in the orbital right so within this in between the electron and nucleus there are spaces there are space available right these are the space we have which is vacant available around the nucleus in an atom right that is what the second option we have that space is available around the nucleus in an atom and this is the orbit in which the electron is present right hence option b is correct okay yeah so this is for question number 11 now the question number 12 we have which one of the following sets of quantum number represents impossible arrangement okay so impossible arrangement we know the you know values n is the principal quantum number l value is can be anything 0 to n minus 1 okay n can be anything from 1 to infinity only zero is not possible for n m value is uh, lies in this range minus l2 plus l and ls is either plus half or minus half that is what we know correct now n can be anything so this is this is all are possible ms is nothing but s spin quantum number this is also possible right plus half or minus half now you see this l and m first of all l and n can not be equal that's the one thing the two things that you have to keep in mind that n must not be equals to l and m l can be equal right l or we can say m should not greater than l This is the relation we have. Easy one, you can easily do it like this. So three plus half possible. So three is zero to two. L is possible. Minus two to plus two. M is also possible. Four zero zero plus half possible. Three two. You see, it, this M L belongs to minus two to plus two, right? So this cannot be greater or equal to two. Or M can not be less than equal to. cannot be less than minus l that is what the true relation we have not greater than l not less than minus l including the sign okay so Minus two to plus two minus three is not possible for L, right? So this option C, you see, it is definitely wrong. Five three zero minus half, which is correct. So option C is wrong for this one. Hence, the answer for the second question is option C. Twelfth one is option C. Okay. So I hope you understood these two questions. Let us move to the another question. the ratio of the energy of photon the ratio of the energy of a photon 2000 angstrom wavelength radiation to that of 4000 angstrom okay so <clears throat> we need to find out the ratio of the energy associated with these two wavelength okay easy one you see the answer of this question would be we can easily solve this we know the energy associated with the wavelength lambda is equals to hc by lambda so what we can conclude from this the energy and wavelength are inversely proportional energy and wavelength are inversely proportional so what we can write e1 by e2 
is equals to lambda 2 by lambda 1 okay lambda 2 by lambda 1 so this is equals to lambda 2 is 4000 and lambda 1 is 2000 okay the ratio of the energy of a photon this so we have this equation so when you solve this you'll get 2 so the ratio is even by e2 is 2 is to 1 the answer is option d okay now the next one the triad of the nuclei that is isotonic okay so what is isotonic first of all isotonic are the atoms which has which has equal number of neutrons equal number of neutrons and how do we calculate neutrons suppose we have an atom x right atom x we have mass number a and atomic number z so the number of neutrons is a minus c that is what the formula we have let us use this formula here so for carbon 14 c6 the number of neutron is 8 for 15 and 7 the number of neutron is 8 for 17 f9 the number of neutron is 8 so we are getting a as the correct option here okay isotonic equal number of neutrons okay if you look at the other 12 minus 6 6 14 minus 7 7 not possible 14 minus 6 8 14 minus 7 7 not possible 14 minus 6 8 14 minus 7 7 hence d is also not possible right so option a is correct in this one isotonic is equal number of neutron okay Series. the wavelength of a spectral line for an electronic transition is inversely related to inversely related to the options are given okay the wavelength of a spectral line for an electronic transition okay so wavelength we know is lambda okay and lambda relation is suppose we have uh, we can you know approach this question this way when electronic transition is there right so electron moves from an orbit which has some energy to the another orbit which also has some energy electronic transition like this initial and final so if this ei this is delta e if this EI is greater than, in terms of energy, it is greater than EF, then in this transition, the energy comes out, energy comes out in the form of, in the form of radiations, and radiations has wavelength lambda suppose wavelength lambda so delta e is the energy that comes out that is that has wavelength lambda so delta e is equals to hc by lambda and we have here ei minus ef remember if you solve this you'll get 1 by lambda 
is R R into one by one by NF square minus one by NI square. This is what the relation we have. R is the Rydberg constant. Okay. Let us see the option. The number of electrons undergoing a transition. No, the nuclear charge of the atom. No, the difference in the energy of the energy levels involved in the transition, the velocity of the electron undergoing the transition. Obviously, you see delta E is equals to Hc by lambda and delta this lambda is inversely proportional to delta E, right? That's what we have the difference in the energy of the energy level involved in the transition, correct? That's why question number 15, the correct answer is what? You see this relation here? From this we can write lambda is inversely proportional to delta E and that is what we have the option. Okay, so answer for this is C. Okay, next one. All these questions are C, they have asked in the exam. Okay, these exams they have asked. Orbital in which the Aubo principle is violated. What is Aubo principle? Aubo principle We also call it as n plus l rule, right? And we use this rule for the filling of electrons in the orbital. We know the lower energy orbital fills first and then the electron goes into the higher energy orbital. The orbital which has lower value of n plus l has lower energy, correct? Means the lower energy orbital fills first, right? So in the question it is given 2s and 2p. So 2s and 2p, if you calculate the n plus l value, for 2s it is 2 plus 0, it is 2. And for 2p it is 2 plus 1, that is 3. It means that 2s orbital must be fully occupied first and then the electron goes into 2p orbital, right? So here says 2s is fully occupied and then the electron goes into 2p, right? So this option is not correct. Here you see the 2s orbital is not occupied and the 2p orbital has electron. Hence, option B does not follow off bow principle. Answer would be option B. Here also it is correct. Here also it is correct. Okay. So if the question is, which of this orbital diagram does not obey Hunt's rule, right? So Hunt's rule is regarding the pairing of electron. And it says the pairing of electron in the orbital belongs to the same subshell in the orbital belongs to the same subshell is not done unless all the orbitals are singly occupied hence all the orbitals must have one one electron present into it so if you see this 2p one one and one should be there so this orbital is paired here so this one does not follow Hunt's rule Okay, fine. Which one of the following relates to the photon? as wave motion and a stream of particles okay as wave motion and stream of <coughs> stream of particles so <clears throat> this is what this is the 
and this is the dual nature correct yes so you see this following relationship of photon both as wave motion as well as a stream of particle obviously the wave plus particle nature particle nature if you have this we call it as the dual behavior right this we call it as a dual behavior right and and this we started in this we started in planck's quantum theory if you remember this planck's quantum theory and then we'll discuss the photoelectric effect right where we come to know here the particle nature of this we know this uh, wave like you know the photons has particles right there are particles present into this the stream of light has particles present into this, this and since it is a wave also so there are the wave particles here photons for light okay and quanta for any other radiations correct so this is given observed by planck and we call it as planck quantum theory and he says what the energy associated with any wave of frequency nu is directly proportional to the frequency of that particular wave e directly proportional to nu then if you remove this proportionality constant e becomes h nu and this is the energy associated with one photon which is present in a radiation of frequency nu right and that's why we say that the energy present in this photon is quantized quantized okay it is available in packets and in discrete manner right that's why this shows both it has particle nature plus it is wave also because photon is a particle of wave that's why it consists of both properties or both relations that is wave as well as stream of particles so answer for this is option d e is equals to h nu okay nodes okay question number 22 you see nodes are what nodes are the surface nodes are the surface or plane where the probability of finding an electron is zero right we know there are two types of nodes we have right spherical node or we also call it as radial and non non spherical non spherical which we also call it as angular node angular known right now the formula for this we know n minus l minus 1 and this one is l so for 3p orbital you see the number of spherical node if you count here 3 minus p value is 1 1 it is 1 and there is only one angular node right so we have one spherical node one angular node so let's see the option now two non spherical nodes not correct two spherical nodes not correct one is spherical and one non spherical this is correct one is spherical two non spherical this is wrong okay so this is the answer for this question option c i hope you get it
let's try these questions now. Okay. 23rd one, it is talking about the orbital angular momentum. So what is orbital angular momentum? Is equals to L into L plus one H by two pi. This is the formula we have. Now we know the orbital, the value of this orbital, L value for each orbital, right? Okay, so we have 2s orbital. So we know L is equals to zero for S subshell. For P it is one, D it is two, F it is three. Zero will substitute here. So the answer orbital angular momentum is coming out to be zero for this one. Okay. Question number 24. The first use of quantum theory to explain the structure of atom was made by. Okay. So Planck, Bohr, Heisenberg, and Einstein. Okay. The first use of quantum theory to explain the structure of atom was made by the answer is what it is it is Bohr right right so Bohr theory was based on the the postulates of quantum theory because it it contains the wave characteristics also right based on the uh, this thing the Planck's equation that's why the answer for this 24th one is B some postulates of Bohr's was based on the quantum theory. Okay, next, 25th one. For a d electron, the orbital angular momentum, same question, we know L is equals to two for d subshell. So orbital angular momentum is equals to L into L plus one root over of it H by two pi. L is equals to two you substitute. So three plus two six root six H by two pi. Remember one more thing h by 2 pi we can also represent this as this symbol so both are correct here so answer for this question is <clears throat> is this Okay. So these are the questions that you know that most commonly they ask in this particular chapter. We'll discuss, we'll have an another session also on the same chapter atomic structure, and we'll see the different types of questions that has been asked in this particular chapter. Okay, thank you so much.